Hi guys, welcome back and welcome to my best of 2023 makeup drugstore favorites. So I've picked up quite a few things this year. Some have worked for me, some not so much. I decided to compile or curate a collection of things that I've really enjoyed this year. And I'm going to be touching on a couple of products that I have had in my stash for a really long time and for good reason. So I'm going to start off with foundation. And today I have on the L'Oreal Freshwear foundation. Now I had the original version which um, was I was right down to the last in the bottle and so I decided to pick up a new bottle because this is really one of my drugstore holy grails or drugstore all-time favorites and to my surprise when I went in store I saw that they've actually reformulated the foundation. So this was the infallible 24-hour freshwear and they have now come out with the infallible 32-hour freshwear and this edition has got an SPF of 25 and it also contains vitamin C. So I was quite intrigued to see how it performed uh, against the original. I got exactly the same shade. I am in 220 Sabla or 220 Sand and um, unfortunately they have tweaked the shade slightly. So I've done a side-by-side -side swatch so you can see the old versus the new. Now the old shade was an absolutely perfect match for my skin. The new shade is slightly more peachy but it still works. I can still get it to work. I think it still looks beautiful on the skin. So what are the differences between the two? Well I actually find that the new version probably has slightly longer staying power even though the old version was absolutely brilliant. I didn't think it could be improved but the new version seems to just have a tad more longevity. Definitely not 32 hours. It probably gives me a good eight hour wear. It has a little bit of luminosity. It does dry down to I would say a satin finish. I do need to powder down afterwards but really still very impressed with this foundation. Um, I can honestly say that the difference between the old and new version is quite negligible. Obviously, as I said, the SPF uh, factor comes into play with the new version. I do wish that uh, manufacturers wouldn't put an SPF in foundation because I just find that it's just kind of redundant uh, for people like me that uh, rely on their own SPF. But anyway, I, I don't feel that it's done anything to the performance or the quality of the foundation. So would I still recommend it? Yes, I definitely would. I think it is a really beautiful one. A concealer that I discovered this year is from Wet n Wild. And this is the Mega Last Incognito Concealer. It is the one that I'm wearing today. And this surprised me. I was really quite blown away by this. It has, I would say, a light to medium coverage. It is quite buildable. It really does blend in beautifully under the eyes. It doesn't uh, dry out the under eye area. There is a little bit of settling. Obviously, I do have wrinkles under my eyes. There is no concealer in the world that is not going to settle into wrinkles eventually. But I was really impressed with this one. They do have a limited shade range and I am in the shade medium tan but really very surprised by this concealer. So let me know if you've tried this and let me know what you think. And now onto setting powder. So no drugstore makeup favorites would be complete without my Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. I really love this. I do have combination skin. So I do have oils that peak out throughout the day. And I find that this powder is absolutely brilliant at uh, mopping up oils. I apply it probably twice a day. It really is that good. I have hit pan on mine. I do need to get a new one but um, really do swear by this. Absolutely love it. And now on to eyes. So another favorite that I have to mention is the Milani eyeshadow primer. I find that this is probably one of the best that I've ever used. It has a beautiful consistency. It just kind of um, blends right into your eyelid. It dries down super quickly and it really does help with the longevity of your eyeshadow. Now a palette that I discovered very, very recently is one by Essence and it is the Welcome to Cape Town eyeshadow palette. I couldn't resist this. I live in Cape Town and this was just really calling my name when I went in store. I've never been disappointed with an Essence eye eyeshadow palette and this one is no exception. So it comes in some beautiful cardboard packaging and it also has a little mirror 
which is really great. And then you have 12 different shades. So you've got six mattes and six shimmers. And I have swatched them for you. The colors are really quite festive. They swatch quite beautifully. This is not the greatest quality in terms of blendability, but honestly, for the price, <laughs> I wasn't really too worried about that. I was just more enamored by the packaging. But it really is a great little palette. It is the one that I have on my eyes today. It is very light, so it's great to take traveling. And um, as I say, not up there with Natasha Denona quality, but really great as an affordable little palette that I thought was really such fun. I do love the Essence Shimmers. I've had great success with them and um, they've honestly never disappointed me. And this one has some beautiful ones. So would recommend this. If you do see it in store, I would suggest that you pick it up. Another palette that I wanted to mention is one by Catrice, which I have already done a review on. This is the Sun Glow Eye and Cheek Palette. Also comes in light cardboard packaging. It also comes with a mirror. You get a blush, a bronzer, and then you get four shadows, two shimmers and two mattes. Again, I wouldn't uh, say that this is great quality, but you know, for travel purposes, you've got everything in there that you would need for a holiday and you can really make this work. So I really would recommend this. If you're looking for something affordable, that's a kind of all-in-one palette. Now onto eyeliners. I discovered one very recently by Wet n Wild and this is called Breakup Proof and I have the shade in black brown. Now I use this on my tight line so it comes in a retractable pencil and honestly the staying power on this is just <laughs> absolutely off the charts. So I use it to tight line my upper lid and um, it honestly does not budge. I really do recommend these if you can get your hands on them. Very good quality, creamy as well. And as I say, really does not budge once you get this onto your eyes. And then a couple of eyeshadow or a, an eyeshadow stick that I discovered this year is the Maybelline, Maybelline Color Tattoo 24 hour cream shadow stick. And I bought this in the shade I Am Fierce and I have compared it here on the back of my hand to the Bobbi Brown. So on the left you have the Maybelline and next to it you have the Bobbi Brown in Forest. Now dare I say the Maybelline actually performs better than the Bobbi Brown. It stays on the eyes longer. For that reason I love it and also because it's probably a quarter of the price of the Bobbi Brown one. So would highly recommend that. They do have a couple of shades and if you haven't tried those I would suggest you give them a go. And then for onto mascaras, so I've tried a couple of drugstore ones this year, wasn't impressed, but I was in the market for a mascara quite recently. And so I decided to give this one a go. This is the L'Oreal Telescopic Lift in Extra Black. This is the one that went viral. I hadn't paid much attention to it at all. And um, didn't, uh, I, I don't think I've ever seen a review on this. So anyway, I picked it up in store. I got it home. And um, I had a look at the wand. It's got uh, that very interesting wand. It's a flat plastic wand with bristles on either side. So quite interesting. Anyway, I took one look at this and I thought, mm, <laughs> this is not going to work for me. I typically enjoy a, a bristle wand. So I just thought, no, this is not going to work. But anyway, I tried it. <laughs> And I was absolutely blown away. And now I know what all the fuss is about. So it really is fantastic. It gives you the most incredible length and separation to your lashes, which really surprised me. And the other thing that surprised me is that I do have hooded lids and I do struggle with mascara. As I'm applying it, I struggle with it transferring onto my mobile lid. And I found that with this, it just doesn't happen. So that was a big surprise. Let me know if you've tried it. Let me know what your thoughts are. The other thing is that it doesn't flake. It doesn't smudge. It really stays on throughout the day. So really 10 out of 10 for the mascara. And now on to blush. I picked up um, a cream blush, a stick blush from the brand Palladio. This is in the shade Darling. It is the one that I have on this side of my face today. I really like this because it is just such a neutral kind of pink. But this is great for touch-ups throughout the day. You can just pop it into your makeup bag and um, 
if you're looking for a little bit more color, it's very easy just to kind of apply on the go. So I liked it for its portability, really enjoyed that. And then on this side of my face, I have a powder blush and I picked up a new one from Wet n Wild and it's in the shade Bed of Roses. It is a matte blush. It really is lovely. It's a kind of delicate peachy pink. You can build it up. I really do love Wet n Wild blushes. The other favorite of mine is the one in Pearlescent Pink, which is slightly darker and it does have a little bit of a shimmer to it. But Bed of Roses, I think, is absolutely lovely for a daytime look. So I would highly recommend it and as I say, really do enjoy the quality. And now onto highlighters. So I picked up a lot of highlighters this year, drugstore highlighters. I really found that I kind of hit the, the jackpot with drugstore highlighters. I have done a video on these. These are the Catrice All Over Glow Tints. I picked them up in all three shades because I just thought they were really fantastic. So today I am wearing the one in Sundip and I have it over this side on my cheekbone really like these as cream highlights they're just great easy to apply and they do give you a very subtle glow which can be built up and then on this side i have a powder highlighter i picked up this from essence it's called make me glow baked highlighter and this is a limited edition and i have a suspicion that it is a dupe for the essence pure nude highlighter which we never got in South Africa. So if you've tried this and if you've tried the Pure Nude, let me know if they are in fact very similar. But I really love this. I think it is um, great for mature skin. It's not chunky. It's not glittery at all. It just gives you a beautiful gleam and you can even bring it sort of onto your cheek if you have textured skin because I find that it doesn't exacerbate textured skin at all. So I really have been enjoying that one from Essence. And then this year I also discovered a lovely matte bronzer and this is from LA Girl. It is in the shade Back to the Beach. And I really like this because it doesn't pull too orange or too red and it comes in a really nice big pan. So very, very easy just to dip your bronzing brush into here and just sweep it on all over. I really do love bronzers that come in big pans. So I would highly recommend this. I love the texture as well. It's very silky smooth and it does remind me of Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. Very reminiscent of that. And then finally onto lips. So I picked up one product which I really rated this year. And this, this is also from Wet n Wild. It is the Mega Slicks Lip Gloss in the shade Cherish. It is the one that I have on my lips today. I love this because it's not sticky, it's not goopy. Once you put it on your lips, you kind of just forget about it and they've got some really beautiful colors. It's got a little bit of a shimmer to it. So really have been enjoying that one. And I have lined my lips today with an old favorite of mine. This is the Revlon Colorstay Longwear Lip Liner in Nude. I really rate this. I think it's up there with my Clinique Nude Lip Liner but obviously much more affordable. So really have been enjoying this one. So guys, those are my drugstore favorites of 2023. Let me know what your favorites have been this year. Leave me a comment down below. Drop in some brands that I don't have access to, like Elf Milani. Let me know what's really blown your socks off. Make me jealous. I'd love to hear from you. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Ciao, ciao.